After installing the software, the next thing is to open it and create a project. So you can just come to your gallery over here and you just see it over here, DaVinci Resolve, you just open it. So once it is starting, you will have access to this platform okay so what you see here is you can create a new project by just clicking on new project over here or you can see existing projects that you are working on currently you can see them all listed here no matter how many projects you have you'll see it over here so down here this is a local one you can have the network or you can have on uh, you can work on davinci on cloud you can utilize the uh, davinci online so you can use work it work with it on cloud next over here you have the view options you can increase or decrease the view of the panel of the project okay whether you want it to be smaller view or you want to increase it to be a bigger view or you can make it this thumbnail view or you can make it to be list view just like so and you can search in cases when you have so many projects opened or so many you've worked on so many projects you can easily come to the search bar and just type to search for a particular project and you can filter by name or by different properties formats or notes that you've added and over here you can add a given folder in cases when you want to work on a particular folder okay down here you can have to create a new project or to open an existing project if you uh, if you find it within the the platform so let's say i'll go back to the thumbnail view because i prefer that and i want to create a new project so i just click on this and just come over here to click on new project and the next thing is you need to give it a name give your project a name so let's call it davinci resolve editing one so call it davinci resolve editing one and we just click on create to create the project so once you click on create to create a project it brings you over to the main davinci resolve platform Okay, so on opening the platform, this is what you have. To the top left over here, you have the media pool. Okay, so this is where you populate all your media in DaVinci Resolve. This is where you upload or import all your media and you populate it over here. And down here, you have the editing panel where you can edit your footage that you've uploaded. This is where you have the view canvas where you, you will be able to preview all what is in the timeline so the first thing you need to notice once you open davinci resolve is that there are pages okay so down here you have the pages you have the media page you have the cut page you have the edit page you have the fusion page you have the color page and you have the fair light and deliver page so depending on which page you are all of them are interconnected so the first one let's start with the first one which is the media this is where you import all your media you can import directly from the local computer that you have over here you can navigate around within your computer and import footage so this involves different kind of images videos audios you can import all of them into this uh, very space so you can navigate locally by just clicking on this and then just navigating around and you can see this is my folder you can just navigate to wherever you have that particular folder okay assuming in my own case i have it here and you can just see i have my my video you can select click and hold the shift key or you can hold the command tool to be able to import all of them i have images and i have audio and i have uh, b-roll of video footage so once you select all of them you can just right click and say import add folder to media into media pool so you can add the folder into media pool or you can add folder and subfolders into media pool if you want to add the folders and subfolders within a particular folder it, into the media pool you can import all at the same time or if you want to import the raw media uh, files into the pool you can equally do that and you have other options add folder and subfolders into media pool this is going to create a new uh, bin for you and you have other options as well so you can just follow through and just see which one is best for you so for my own case i would like to import the add folder and subfolders into the media so once you click on import it's going to bring in pop up this this item what it's saying is the selected clips have different frame rates to the project the ones that you want to import have different frame rates so what you just need is to equate them to the existing frame rate that you have chosen uh, for example so all you need to do is to say change it you just click on change and everything is going to be changed to uniform frame rate throughout your working environment in davinci resolve so you just click on change and you have all of them imported all the media footage are imported over here so the first thing you need to notice once you are this is the media pool uh, once you're here you've imported everything and as you hover over any given uh, footage any given media you will be able to see the preview of it on the canvas over here 
and you can see including the audio you can be able to navigate or hover over around it and you can see the preview of the footage the same thing goes with all the other media as a whole so even the images you'll be able to see a preview of them and at any given point you can decide to work on them so this is basically one way to import media into DaVinci Resolve. So another second way you can import media is by selecting the different media, opening the file containing the media, select all the media, you can drag all of them and then import them and just drop them into the uh, media bin just like so very easily. So over here you can also change the view. You can change it to the either, either the thumbnail view or the list view as well so you can see your footage directly from here just like so and you can select and drag and drop over here so let's try to look at the cut cut page this is where you do most of your cutting of your footage you can bring in footage over here and you can do most of the cutting from here so you can just drag and drop any footage into the editing timeline and you can do all your cutting over here the next is the editing tool editing page this is where you spend most of your time here when you are using davinci resolve this is where most of the key editing features are you will have access to everything you need as as a whole so you can drag and drop any footage for example, you can just move and you can just drag easily and drop any footage into this timeline. So you can do, once you drop, you can see it over in the timeline. And once you drop a footage, this is the editing page. You can see a preview of your timeline over here. You can move your clip around within the timeline. Okay. So this is editing tool. This is the editing page. If you want to edit, have a, a look at the properties of each of the clip or each of the footage, you can just select it. And you can come to inspector over here and you will have access to and you have access to the different properties it has so let's uncheck inspector and we have another screen shown over here okay so this is the source canvas this is where you can preview a given canvas before you import it into the media okay so next we have the fusion fusion panel okay this is where you edit you do most of uh, the addition of graphics and different kind of animations you can do it over here next we have the color page this is where you do most of your coloration color correction and color grading later on we'll touch all this and how to use it for beginners purpose okay most of the key things that you will edit in terms of your coloration you do it over here color correction and color grading i'll show you how to use most of these features in the most easiest way okay so to have the best of your videos looking cinematic and fantastic at least for beginners purpose next we have the fairlight this is where you do most of your audio editing audio properties and audio editing over here you deal with all your audio and its properties over here in the fair light and the last page on davinci resolve is the deliver deliver is where you will usually have to export render your video set in the properties the export properties and then export it okay if you want it to be in the h.264 which is usually the mp4 format or uh, the hyperdeck or the h.265 or pro resolution format you can change all over here if you want to export video with these properties or if you want to export only audio you can just specify over here and which file and you can specify the name and locations over here so you do all that at the deliver panel deliver page okay this is where you specify the rendering properties and what and what you want to put on the render queue and you see it over here so for now let's go back to the editing mode because this is where we are going to spend most of our time editing video clips in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so the next thing is I want to show you the settings option down here at the bottom right. Okay, before we go into the editing proper, I will show you the settings down here. Once you click on it, it's going to open the project settings. Okay, whether you have made a mistake or you want to edit something or you want to change the configuration of the video. Okay, you can see the settings over here. You can change to the different properties over here and you can ch change to the aspect ratio and other properties video monitoring properties as well as the optimized media properties over here you can choose and change accordingly the image scaling and the color management you can change over here so just be aware of the settings over here the next thing is the workspace if you are so certain and you like a given workspace you have played around with the different properties and you like the workspace you can easily come over here 
and save it as a preset. You can just come over here and you can just come to layout preset, save layout as a preset, or you can import a given preset as you want to start working. If you have another one, a given preset that you've saved, you can always import it or you can save a given one as a preset. For example, I like this and you can just save it as my preset. Okay, and you can say save. And you can just come refer to it at any given point and it will just refer back to this particular preset. The next thing is to what you want to show on the page. You can see from here, you can switch to, switch to page. You can decide to show the media. You can start to show to the, the cut, the, the edit, the fusion. You can the color and the fairlight. You can decide to unshow any of the pages from here, right? From here, you can disable or enable any of the pages that you want to show also from here. So this is basically about editing and the workspace, how to save it as a preset and how to import it as a preset. So once we open the DaVinci Resolve and we are at the edit mode, the next thing is I would like to show you how to import media into the timeline and do some basic editing. So to import media, there are two ways. The first one is to start using the source panel over here to once you double click on any given clip, for example, this video, once you double click on it, you can see it shown on the source panel over here. So the first thing is you can select an in point and out point by just moving the timeline, the, the playhead over here. So for example, I want at this point to create an in point, maybe from here, I want to create an in point. I just hit on the letter I to this to create an in point. And then the next thing is I move to another point, for example, to this point, and I want to create an output point from here. I click on, I press on the letter O on my keyboard, and this creates the in point and out point within the source panel over here. So the next thing is if I want to drag and drop my clip, I will just easily drag it and drop it over here. And you can see the preview over here. So the first thing you need to understand is as we drag and drop a given clip, you will notice that it came in together with the audio clip and the preview of it is shown, shown on the preview panel over here to the top right. So what if I, want, I don't want to import the audio and the mid and the video together? Maybe I want to import only the audio section of this selected portion of the clip. I will just come to the audio over here and just drag it over here directly. You can see it just dragged and dropped only the audio part. So let me zoom out a little with this zooming tool so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, it just brought in only the audio section of the selection. What if I want to bring in only the video section? I can also over hover over it and you can see the video section over here. And once you drag it, and it's, you can see it's brought in only the video section of the of the selected area in the clip. So this is how to basically import. Another way you can import your video clip into the timeline is just by directly dragging it from the media pool, drag and drop the entire clip into the timeline. So you can use this zooming tool to zoom out to see the entire clip that I have brought in into my selection, into the editing timeline. So this is it. So this is the second way to bring in a media into the timeline by just dragging and dropping in addition to identifying the in point and out point. So over here, I can just navigate around and identify my in point and my out point and use the other editing to features and edit it accordingly. So one more thing I would like to highlight is you can select a given selection. Once you finish on the selecting the given portion of the clip that you want to import, the third method of importing is you can drag that section into this very preview panel and you will have this option to insert the video directly or to override the existing video or to replace an existing video or to fit to fit to fill or you can do all sorts of a ripple overlay overwrite or the about. I usually do a pen to end. So once you do a pen to end, wherever the, your clip is, it's going to put it at the end of it. So once I do open a pen to end and you can see it put it at the end of this particular clip and then this is where that particular clip is going to start. So this is the third way of importing a media into the timeline. All right, now that we have learned how to import um, giving media clips into the timeline, let us try to have a look at the basic editing tools that are in DaVinci Resolve. So once we import your media, the first thing is you notice to the left over here, you have the, the video clips and the audio clips. So they are labeled just like so video one and audio one. And you have the option to lock a particular track either the video or the audio, you just click on this and everything is locked and you cannot change anything within this clip again. 
and then you have the option to disable the video uh, the video track if you want to disable it but it's there you can disable a given track you can do it from here or you mute a given track audio track you can mute it or you can put it on solo which means you can silent any other audio within the clip and you just be able to listen to this particular audio you are dealing with this audio on this timeline is the only audio you are going to listen to every other audio you're going to solo mute it or you can, you're going to mute it direct so this is about this you can easily add a track by just selecting right clicking anywhere outside it and just uh, select and add a track you can add a mono track you can add a stereo track or you can add tracks multiple of tracks or add subtitle tracks or they are about you can delete a track if you so wish the next thing is you will understand that we have different kind of features over here so the first one to the left is the zoom in and out tool over here you can zoom in to see the complete panel or you zoom out you can zoom out or you zoom in to see the details of the uh, video clips that you've uploaded and the next to it is also the zoom feature you can also zoom do custom zoom you can uh, do full extent zoom when you click on it it's going to once you click on this it's going to give you the full zoom the zoom to to fit on all the clips that are within the timeline the next is a detail zoom if you click on it it's going to zoom to the clip the timeline okay the, the playhead and it's going to give you the detail of the what is under uh, within the playhead so we just click on this this is detailed zoom and you'll be able to have an uh, access to all the features uh, very clearly in detail okay next is you have the custom zoom once you click on it you're going to have access to all this you can zoom in and out within the timeline so the next thing is we have the the marker tool okay if you want to at any given point you want to select at a given point you want to maybe remind yourself that you have to add something you can just click on it and it's going to add a marker to it you can see it over here and you can double click on the marker tool and you have you can put it you can give it a name you can put in details maybe you want to add color or you want to add a text over here you can give it a description or you can even change the coloration of this particular marker tool and once you say done you will have it uh, selected over here and at, during your editing you can always refer back to it and you will see once you hover over it you will see the preview of what you needed to add on it the next is the flag tool you can use flag tool also on any video clip to add uh, some description or some detail that you may need to add on that particular clip so once you click on it to add you can see you can you've just added it on this clip and you can double click on it also to put in some notes or some details and you can change the coloration as well if you so wish and you can remove the flags if you so wish at any given point in time so the next thing is we have the the snapping tool okay the snapping tool is when you when you try to move a clip while on the selection mode when you try to move a clip away you can see that it snaps okay when you try to bring it closer you can see it snaps to the next clip and if you want to remove this snapping feature you can just uncheck this snapping tool and once you try to snap to move close you can see the snapping tool is no more okay if you want to bring it back you just select it uh, enable it and you can see it snaps okay next is you have the linking tool okay the linked selection tool this ensures that the audio and the video are linked together if you don't want them to be linked and moved together you can always unselect it like now if i try to move this clip you can see it moves together with the audio if you don't want that you can just unselect this you can see when you try to move you will be able to move the audio only okay without the, the video or you can move the video only without the audio so to link them back you just have to come back and select the uh, link mode so both of them can move together at any given point in time so this is about that next is you have the one of the most important editing feature is the selection mode with the selection mode you will be able to move your clips away or outside just like so you can move drag and move them around you can exchange their position with all with the selection tool and you can even as well reduce the sizing or you can trim your clip from the edge once you navigate to the edge of a clip you can see it changes to this to this sign and once you try to drag it inwards you can see it trims the clip from the right and you can do that also from the left it trims the clip from the left as well so you can move left and right the only key thing you should pay attention to is it leaves a gap whenever it is reducing a clip so it is leaving a gap so you try to drag okay and it's leaving a gap unlike the other one that i'm going to show you in a bit so the next is we have the 
trim edit mode which you can get to by the letter t the trim edit mode does three things for example once you select it once it is active you can see you have the option to do three things the first for example is you can extend the clip around okay you can extend the length of the clip around if you see the green sign it means the clip is still extendable you can still extend it further but once you see the red sign it means that particular clip has reached its maximum or its end so it can no more be extended so this is the first uh, feature and then another feature is you can when you try to move it around at the center you can see you are maintaining the same clip but you are entering into the other clip okay so once you get to the end of it you can see it becomes red but then the length of the clip is maintained but then you can move and trim it forward or backward accordingly and then you can have the last one which is a slide trimming you can come to the bottom of the clip over here and you can try to slice it around you can see the slicing maintaining the same size of the clip but then entering into the other clip okay you can just easily be entering and moving around just like so just like slicing just like the name implies slicing into the clip so let me kind of undo so we can show the other features for example the dynamic trim mode the dynamic trim mode makes use of the playhead to move either faster to the right or faster to the left increasing or decreasing the size of a clip so for example if i enable the dynamic trim mode and i press the letter n the letter l it's going to extend the video clip to the right and if i press it twice it's going to extend it twice faster and if i click on press on the letter j it's going to trim the the clip to the left and if i press it twice or thrice it's going to trim it a bit faster so let's try to the letter l and you can see it is increasing the it's, it's trimming it okay it's extending the length of the clip and it's trimming the other one and i can stop by clicking on letter k or i can move backwards and it's going to trim it backwards just like so if you press it three times you will it's going to trim it faster so once you enable the dynamic trim mode you can easily press the letter l and it's going to trim it to the right if you press it twice it's going to trim it faster one thing you should pay attention to is you can see the starting and the end point of the trim over here and the process as it is moving around out uh, this is just a preview if you want to trim to the left you can just uh, press the letter j and it's going to trim it faster to the left okay so the next and which is one of the most important tool in the editing process is the razor tool just like the name implies the blade tool it just cuts the clip at any given point so once you have it selected and at any given point you just click it's just going to slice the clip into two so for example just like so it's just going to slide the tool just going to cut your tool at the clip at any given point which once you hit on the left click it's just going to cut create a cut on your clip and with the selection tool you will now be able to move the clip or separate them accordingly move them around uh, they are now separate tools within the clip so this is basically the most important tools over here you have the stop button and the uh, and the playhead button to start and stop a given clip to move to the last frame or to move to go to the first frame in the clip you can do all that and you can loop a given clip to keep playing continuously within a clip so later on i will show you how to use the source, source button over here to do quite a number of things within your tools so but for editing purpose at beginner level this is all you need over here now that we have a basic understanding of the editing tools in DaVinci Resolve, let me show you how to do some basic editing like cut and do some trims, some ripple, delete and the other about. So to just apply it, all you need to do is to just walk around with your playhead. So at any given point, if you intend to insert a cut, you can just use the letter B to insert the cut. You can insert cut at this point and once you click, select the clip and you just press on letter b it's going to enable the razor blade tool okay and you can just click to uh, create a cut okay so once you create a cut you are free to go back to the selection tool and you can select that particular portion of the clip and click um, press on delete to delete it which is going to leave a space over here and if you want to remove that space you can come over here select it and you can come all the way and press delete and it's going to cover it just like so. So this is one way to delete a portion of a clip and to cover the gap. Okay, so let's do that again using a different method. You can do the same thing by 
is coming to the location where you want to uh, delete for example i want to delete from the beginning of this clip from this point to this playhead all i need to do is to press and the shift and the open bracket so the shift plus open bracket is going to delete that portion of the clip okay, that i have selected from beginning to this point let me do that again uh, undo and from this point like i said from this point to the playhead is what i want to do what i want to delete so the shift for plus the open bracket is going to create that for me and manually i can select this portion and right click maybe and say ripple delete and it's going to delete and cover the remaining part of the and rejoin the clips together okay another way to do it is if i want to delete from the beginning of this playhead at this point to the end of the clip all I, I need to do is to hold down the shift and the close bracket this time around the shift and the close bracket and it's going to delete from that particular point of the playhead to the end of the clip okay so let me undo that again the basic difference is that when you do that kind of delete it's always going to leave a space in between the clips so whether front or backward it's going to re uh, leave a, a space in between the clips so if you want to do a ripple delete without leaving a space all you need to do is to hold down the command key plus shift plus the open bracket so let's do that and see how it happens so the command plus shift to create a delete for, uh, to create a ripple delete around this place so this is the key sh uh, keyboard shortcut i'm going to use i want to delete this section and cover it just like a ripple delete so i hold the command shift and the open bracket and it does the magic so let me undo that again and i want to do it from the er extreme end over here so assuming i have these clips connected and i want to do ripple delete from here to this point while connecting the clips together all i need to do is to hold the command key plus shift plus the close bracket and it does the magic for me so that's basically how to do ripple delete using different kind of methods i have shown you how to do the trimming from the edges okay and i have shown how to do the trimming from the other edge as well and how you can move on and how you can create and delete the basic spaces in between the clips and all that so this is basically how to edit your footage pretty fast with, with the help of the shortcut keys to do ripple delete and so on so just master it later on i will show you how to customize and use the shortcut keys to your advantage so the next thing i would like to show us is how to bring in b-rolls into your video so b-rolls are usually medias that connect the video content to the reality maybe to show some descriptions while you, the audio is still playing in the background so let's say we want to bring in a media to showcase what we are explaining at some point for example i may want to bring in some videos that i've imported uh, like this mid like this video i want to bring it in so all you need to do is double click on it and it's going to show on the preview panel source panel over here so you just define the points that you want to bring in for example the in in point at this point maybe i want to bring it at this at this point and i can hit my letter i and you can just move quickly to another point maybe i want to bring in this at, uh, at this point at the as the output so i'll hit on letter o and I can just drag this section of the clip over to the timeline over here to see it very clearly I have to use the zoom tool over here to just zoom out so I can see the section very very clearly so you can see as I move around it overtakes because it is at the top it overtakes what is existing in the video as I'm explaining I can quickly move in to show the b-roll and after some time then go back to my explanation and then continue with the explaining so you can have the option to link it and bring it up in the uh, in the video and the audio format or you can decide to mute the audio format so you can maintain the original or the main video the main audio of the of the clip this is how to bring in a b-roll section you can do that with the video you can do the same thing also with audio if you want to bring a section of the audio you can just double click and it's going to show a preview on this section panel in the source panel and you can just all the way move to select the in point and you can move as well to select the out point at any given point and once you're starting with what you have you can just easily drag it and drop it into the section and you can see you've just dragged and dropped only the audio section that you've selected okay you can equally bring in images to serve as b-rolls okay while you are explaining you can bring in images so you can just navigate to where whichever image you want to bring in for example this soft maker free office you can just double click on it 
and you can easily drag it and drop it on the timeline you are free to increase or to decrease it as appropriate as you so wish depending on how much length you want it to appear within the particular clip so as you are explaining this case you will see it's going to come up as a b-roll so quickly it comes up and then it continues for example up to the end of it then it will go back to the main to the main video so it's now going back to the main video so you can see very very easily so this is basically how to bring in b-rolls to to put it on top of your video to enhance the flow of the content so that you can show more or visuals so that you can connect better with your audience all right so the next thing is how to bring in audio and do some basic editing in the timeline so to bring in an audio you can do the same method that we've shown you can right click on the media pool and come all the way to import media directly over here or you can come all the way and open the file containing the media you can just easily select it drag it and drop it in the media pool okay so once you've done that you can just drag it also into the timeline let's say we drop something like this in the timeline and it because it's a video and audio component we can just select or link them and then we can try to delete the audio the video component of it and we can listen to the audio to have a preview about how it's going to sound Okay, so this is just how to bring in the audio so let's do some basic editing as regards the volume editing so the first thing you notice that once you select a given clip you can increase volume size you can play around with the volume size by selecting it and once you come over hover over it you can see this small line you can use it you can just drag to reduce or increase the sizing okay you can see the line you can just increase or decrease the volume of the audio just like so and you can do the same using another method by enabling the mixer over here you can just come all the way and click on the mixer and you can see the different audio tracks this is audio one this is audio two right now we are on audio two because you can see audio one is muted okay this is audio two so you can increase or decrease the audio as well using this same uh, increase or decrease in tool so the next method to increase or decrease is to use the inspector panel over here once you click on the inspector panel you can come to the audio section you can check out the video in the audio volumes over here and you you're free to increase or decrease and you can see the preview on the timeline just like so very easily once you're starting or you are not comfortable with the with the audio that you have selected you can always undo or reset it back to the normal one that you've started working with you can reset or you can do increase or decrease at the same time now at any given point you can try to cut or create a cut in the audio for example by selecting the razor tool and you can create a cut over here and you can see it's now two different clips okay two different audio clips and maybe when you are listening to the audio at this point you may want to uh, create a softer outlet okay you want it to finish at a soft point it just kind of fades out or there about something like that so to create a fade out in the audio all you need to do is to come over hover over to the audio you can see this small icon you can easily drag it and you can see it creates a little bit of fading depending on how far you want it to go and how sharp you want it to fade out you can just create that fade fading out and you can see just a preview of how it's going to be playing and then at the end fades out so you can see the fading out kind of uh, it's kind of fantastic and it's done it professionally you can do the fade in as well if you want it to start in the same way you can do the same fading as you are creating you can create it on the at the end point of the audio So you can see the starting how it fades in till it gets uh, to the maximum level and the next thing i would like to show us is what if i want to create i want to lower the volume of the clip at a given point for example at this point i want to just lower a section of the clip i can do what we call creating a, a keyframe around the clip okay so we can just select it and come back to the inspector over here and you can come all the way here and click on this to create a keyframe 
the first keyframe can be the first uh, let's say we have this as the first keyframe and then we move a little bit we will create another keyframe and we move on a little bit and create another keyframe and then down here we can have the last keyframe so to have a clear preview of this you can come down here to the uh, bottom right of the audio you can just click on this and you will have a clear idea about what you have just done so if i want i can just hover over this and click and you can see i'm having a, a preview of lowering a section of the clip and we can play with the uh, with the other features as well you can move move around and play around with the uh, keyframes to have it lower to any level of your choice so you can see we can lower a given section or we can increase a given section if you so wish okay so this is how to create keyframes the next thing is how to add text into the video timeline okay so all you need to do to start adding text and formatting it is to come to the top left over here and you see effects you just click on effects and you can see a bunch of things the audio transition video transition and down here you have titles you can check around for a preview as you hover over any of the titles you can see a preview of what it is going to look like so you can see as you just hover over it you will have an idea of what it is and what is going to had a preview of it in the canvas so for example you can have this simple text and you can have different kind of intros lower thoughts and many many more you can see them over here uh, davinci resolve has quite a lot of sample text that you can bring in and customize to your liking accordingly very very nicely prepared okay these are templates that you can use lower thoughts and all that so let's say we want to take in this as an intro i think i like this dark box Okay, so let's say we want to take in this as an intro. All we need to do is to select it, drag it into the timeline, okay, and drop it just like so. And once we select it, we can come to the inspector tab over here and you will have access to the basic editings of this particular text that you've brought in. Just like the name, normal text editing tools, for example, you'll be able to change the font style and all that. You can change the font style to anyone of your choice. And you'll be able to change the the symbol do you want it light regular bold extra bold or light italic or italized all, and all that you can select directly and you can change the color of the text by mere selection of this and you have access to the color panel over here and you can change it to any color of your choice you can select or you can just navigate around to be able to see a preview of how the coloration is going to look like and I think white is actually doing a great job you can navigate around to see sample text other coloration that you can play around with so once you select any you can just click on ok and that takes it as your sample you can increase the size of the text over here if you so wish and you can do some track put some tracking if you want you can increase or decrease the line spacing put in emphasis and play around with the positions as appropriate you can use this x and y axis to play around with the position to increase it move up or down accordingly down here you have the line coloration this right now is set to blue you can change the coloration to something else that can fit in your content for example this purple color might go so you can say okay and you can see you have changed it you can change the green and the, the other other features as well because it's not uh, purely uh, purple you can change play around with the green blue and alpha and the other colors as well so once you are starting you're done with this and you previewed and see that this is what you want you can have a preview of it yeah i think this is it and i think it kind of looks fantastic even the out the the exit looks cool so you have the other option when it comes to the text as you are on the text uh, you have the other option like the settings you can play around with the transform in cases for you to use the transform is if you want to move the text away or you want to change the position or you want to move it to other places you can zoom in and out you can link and or link the two of them and you can change position uh, rotation or they are about pitching anchor points you can change all that from here you can do a lot of cropping dynamic zooming if you want later on i will show you how to do dynamic zooming and other features of that sort so you can bring in different text you have compositions in each one if you click you will see the, the, the properties underneath 
the dynamic zoom if you if you enable it you see the properties the cropping you can do cropping of the text they are about you can check and all that so you are free to try it and see what you can do with this basic text within the video clip you can be able to bring in other text as well so you can bring in simple text or something like caption to be able to to showcase what you are working on uh, very professionally so maybe at this point you may want to bring in this sample something like something like this all you need to do is simply drag and drop it on the timeline and define the selection you can increase or decrease the length of the text as well if you so wish okay depending on how long or how far you want it to cover so once you select the text you can add different kind of features like i have highlighted you can even add backgrounds and so on so you can come over here you can see front light controls uh, motion blur effects and so on you can see all of them over here you can play around and edit accordingly so another thing i want to show you is show us is how to use the transform to move the text around because right now if you try to move it without this basic control it's not going to move so all you need to do is once you are on the text menu you can come all the way here to this small arrow you click on this small arrow you select on transform and once you select on transform over here now you have it as a free tool you will be able to move it around accordingly within the text within the video clip okay so you can change position directly or you can move it to the top or wherever you want to put it so this is basically how to use the transform you can even zoom in and out to change the sizing accordingly so this is basically how to bring in text and play around with its properties remember you have both 2d and 3d text once you come down here you will see a lot of you can have subtitles also if you want to add subtitles and you can have 3d text as well if you want so these are 3d text uh, effects if you want to add all right, so the next thing I would like to show us is how to add transitions and effects on text, on B-rolls and on our video. So, for example, if we want to add a transition into our effect or text, we can easily do that. All you need to do is to start by make sure you are on the edit button and then you can come all the way to effects over here and you can see video transitions and audio transitions as well. If you want to fade in and out, so once you come to video transitions, you can see different kind of transitions. Uh, for example, you have the additive dissolve and you have the blur dissolve and cross dissolve or the about. So as you navigate or hover over a given text and a given effect, you are going to see the preview of it in the panel. So as you hover over the dissolve text, dissolve effect or transitions, you'll be able to see the sample or preview of how it's going to look like. This is smooth cut. And you can see other other transitions as well arrows and cross irish diamond shape transitions of different shapes you can see a bunch of them you have the the eye iris a hexagon and the oval pentagon square triangle and so on and you have others like the motion ones you have push i always like this push effect you can have the push you can have slide effect and you can have split effects as well you can have shapes if you if you try if you want to try it you have shapes of different types different types and you have wipes of different types as well so you, it's up to you to try to select from this bunch of features bunch of different effects resolve is really equipped with quite a lot of different kind of uh, transition effects depending on your choice and your your preference so you can you're free to explore all of them and as you hover over you will be able to see to have an, a preview of how it's going to look like uh, as, a, as a sample so i think let's go through with simple wipe simple slide something like this something like this and to put it on a text all you need to do is just to drag that effect and drop it in in between the text so you can see you can just drop it here and you can see it has taken over so once you want to try it if you want to see it you can zoom out or you can come to the extreme edge to increase the length of the, the duration of the transition or you can reduce the duration of the transition as well you can increase or decrease it accordingly so to see the sample of it let's try to see you can see how it ended or how it wiped into the next clip the visualization is very possible is very visual when, when you are on a clip so let's try to create a cut within a clip and then try to put in the transitions as well so let's say we created this cut okay so let's say we created this cut and we want to add in this push transition we can just drag it 
and drop it in between the cuts and we can increase or decrease the transition effect as well as we so wish so let's say we leave it something like this and let's try to have a preview of the transition so we just click and you can see it very nicely yeah i think this kind of looks cool if you want to see the properties of the transition as well you can just come over it and double click you can have it selected once you select the transition you can see the transition properties over here so over here you have it it's a push transition this is a duration you can you can increase or decrease the duration that's manually like increasing or decreasing the length over here you can increase or decrease the number of frames and do all sort of push effects to can change the push this is push to the left you can just change it to push to right or push up or push down as you so wish you can change accordingly you can change the more you can add some motion blur as it is pushing let it just put in some blur effect a little and then you can change the coloration as well and the border effect you can change also all that so you have a lot of uh, controls over here uh, as regards the transitions the type of transition that you've included so let's see i have changed it to push up and let's see whether that has taken effect or not you can see it has taken it push push down very easily so this is how to add basic transitions in between clips so let's see how we can add it within b-rolls so we have some b-roll effect over here so let's see how we can add the transition within b-roll in between a given b-roll and the video okay so let's say at this point i want to add in a transition so let's say it's a push or let's say it's a let's try something something else center wipe so let's say we put in this center wipe so at the end of this bureau we want to have a transition and we want it to be center center wipe and we can increase the size the length a little bit so once you have this as your b-roll plane before you transit to the next clip you're going to see the effect okay just like so because it takes time we can reduce the sizing and it will transit a bit faster so let's have a look you can see it so this is basically it you can select it while selecting you can see it over here in the inspector panel this is the transition properties you are free to play around with it as well to edit uh, anything you want accordingly in addition to video transitions we equally have audio transitions so once you check on audio transitions you can see it over here so you can have cross fed with this much decibel increase uh, you can have cross fed out okay this is fed out this is fed in with this much decibel going up and coming down and cross fed with zero decibel and this is custom you can customize it to your liking okay so all you need to do is just to if you have a given clip audio clip that you are trying to add some transitions to you can easily add by selecting the clip for example i have a cut here and i'm trying to create a transition between these two clips maybe by transiting by fading out i can just drag this and drop it at the at, at that particular point and i have the access to uh, put in this transition and let's see the effect this is going down by 3 db i can increase or decrease the sizing as well so let's let me undo this and go back to the selection mode and select it i can increase the transition effect the the fading out effect by just coming over you can see it let's hear the fading out you can see it fades out uh, this is just the another way of fading adding a fade out but this is just uh, ordinary three decibel it's not going to be that much so the next thing is on how to add dynamic zoom on a particular clip so let's say we have this clip selected and we have its properties in the inspector panel over here and you can see among the properties you have the dynamic zoom over here so once you click to enable it you can see click you have the different features in the dynamic zoom you can see this is linear you can do ease in ease out and ease in and out at the same time so you can swap as well so different instead of easing you can ease out so this is a very small clip so let's say we enable dynamic zoom and it's going to be linear so let's try to have the effect so look at the from the beginning of the clip to the end of it it zooms out okay zooms in and zooms out so let's try to have it in preview and see what it does so you can see gradually it is moving in the background okay it is easing out okay from the way it started 
you can see it is easing out and you can now see me very clearly as it is out so to see it very clearly you have to just move in a bit faster so this is this is it and this is the easing out this is the easing in and this is the moving in and then moving out so gradually as i'm explaining the concept it is increasing or it is zooming in and it is zooming out zooming out directly for me to see for you to see me clearly you can swap in as well the effect you can swap and make it instead of zooming out it's going to zoom in accordingly so right now it is zooming out so once we swap it's going to start zooming in okay so once we enable the swap you can see it is now zooming in okay you can see me very clearly or like at the beginning of the clip okay this is now zooming in and you can change it as well to either easing and out accordingly from here so this is how to add dynamic uh, zoom in your clip within davinci resolve and one last thing that i would like to show us within the panel is how to how to play around with the view of the panel so to play around with the view of the panel this is a timeline option uh timeline view option once you click on this you will have the option to this is a timeline option you once you click on once you click on it you have the timeline view options you have the view video view options you have the audio view options you can play around with all of them from here so for example let's say the timeline view option this is how it is interconnected between the links you can click and you can see you will not be able to see the waveform in the audio or you can enable to see it or you can disable uh, it just like so and you can disable you can play around with the, the timeline view over if uh, effect also over here and you can enable it to be something like this or with and without the waveform the video view options also you can change it from this normal one to the thumbnail one but only at some locations and you can have the complete video without the thumbnail view as well so just something like this without the picture or without the frame rate without thumbnail view within the video clip or you can have it i think i prefer it this way so you can have a preview of the thumbnail of the video part of the clip what is it all about and what you can do so the same thing goes to the audio view options you can have it with the audio shown in one way just like so or you can have it uh, shown in two ways okay so, some like multi stereo and you can have it in the line format over here as well so you can change accordingly and down here you can play around with the sizing this is for the video you can increase the sizing or you can decrease the sizing as well if you so wish so you can see it now becoming very clear clearly and with the audio as well you can increase or decrease the sizing as well just from here so you have this very controls to yourself to play around with accordingly at any given point Alright, the next thing is we're going to enter into one of the most important section of the video editing in Resolve, which is the color correction and color grading. Okay, so let's say at this point, we're going to treat this coloration at the beginner level. So everything is going to be very basic. If you've not added coloration to your footage before, this is going to be very, very basic. So it's just going to be the most basic color correction video you've ever seen. So this is just simply for beginners. If you are an advanced user, then I recommend you try another video. But this is going to be strictly for beginners. So select, assuming we are at the editing tab, if you want to start your color correction, all you need to do is come to the color page over here by just clicking on color and it is going to bring you to the color page down here. So at the beginning, this might look a little bit uh, scattered and confusing and so professional to a beginner, but there's nothing to worry about. It's just going to be, I'm going to in explain the basic concept over here of what you will have and what, what you can use to play around with your footage to have the best experience possible. So at this point, you will have the primary color wheels, which is at the bottom left over here. There are different uh, color wheels and they add different effects to your video. So all you need to do is to just understand their basic functions. So what we have is sometimes we have our blacks we can increase or decrease our blacks which you can do from the lift over here the lift over here is just representing the blacks okay the dark part of the video and the gamma is just the mid-range okay and then we have the gain which is uh, representing the highlight part of the video and then we have the offset which talks about the image or the video as a whole any correction is going to be on the 
coloration or the image considering the image as a whole that's what the offset does and we have different kind of and we have small wheels over here we call them the master wheels okay they, they can be used to tweak in the controls different controls to bring in different kind of effect into our video so as you hover over as you drag and move a tweak the the master controls you're going to see the effects on your on your video clip over here so just pay attention as i explain the basics this is a custom curves you have it for all the coloration the yellow the red the blue and the green coloration you can alter them accordingly and down here we have the color scopes this is very interesting if you understood the basic because sometimes you don't have to trust your eyes when it comes to coloration they can help you to guide you when it comes to what you should add and whether your color is picking whether you are losing some data all these color scopes can help you to have an idea of what is happening sometimes you cannot trust your eyes so let's try to look at the picture clearly or the the video clearly and let's say it's a bit raw from the camera but we want to make it make the darkest part of it appear darker like my hair over here and this screen uh, uh computer's uh, keyboard and then this dark parts to appear uh, very much darker uh, there about so you can increase this by just coming over to the lift which is the darkest part so if you play around with the lift you can select this dot over here and once you try to move it around you can see the dark part of the image is moving okay you can try to tweak it around and you can see you can you can change coloration accordingly to any color of your choice and don't worry about all these changes in the darkest part you can always double click on it to to reset it to bring it back to normal or you can come over here to this small arrow and undo or reset everything to normal like right now it's it's already reset to normal so but then while we want to tweak we just want to bring in the blacks to increase the black so that it becomes to appear blacks and the whites to appear white so you just come over here to this master wheel and you can tweak it around so let's say we we can increase and you can see the blacks are gradually popping out and they are appearing to be really black so just pay attention to the wheels over here so that it stays within if it touches and try to go over this very selection it means you are losing some data so whatever you are going to do we just tweak it a little without having too much of the coloscopes going out of range so you have only your blacks coming out to be very clearly you can see my hair now appearing very black and the other sections also appearing very black while still maintaining these scopes within range so this is how to add some black and then you can add some white if you want so let the white part of it appear white so let's say we can come over here and just tweak it a little bit so that it appears white the white part will appear white and you can see it coming out so you just be mindful of this tweaking so that you don't lose much of the data but just have it a little bit so that you can see the white part coming out to be white if you put it to be too much then it's going to glow just like so and you are losing a lot of data so you can just bring it back bring it back to normal but just make sure that the white is is white just like so something like this i think it's okay then what i usually do is i used to play with the saturation as well i can add little saturation or reduce the saturation as you so wish accordingly so you can come over here i can have this saturation once you come over here you can see the mouse changing into two arrows you can just try to tweak it a little bit you can reduce the saturation a bit or you can add it to make it more cinematic a little bit so you can see we can add a little bit of saturation and you can see the effect while still paying attention to the the scopes in the panel so you can see we can add a little bit of the saturation so it appears so what you can do at any given point to see the effect of what you have done is you can always come over here to this bypass color color grades and fusion effects once you click you can see the before and you can see the after you can see the before and you can see the after and then you can see and you appreciate the little you have done the next thing i used to usually touch is i make sure i'm on the white color selected over here and i click to select two points because i usually make an s shape okay so once you move a little bit up it's going to increase the lighting you can see okay you can increase the lighting and you can bring it down to decrease the, the lighting you can bring it down to bring out the blacks also clearly so I, I think you can see it coming out a little bit clearly 
and the picture is now very much better and professional you can do the same if you notice that there's more of red you want to reduce the red coloration in the picture you can do that as well you can just play around with it if you do it too much it's going to you're going to see the effect but then it's just going to be very little so that you can you can see it the impact very clearly and if you have noticed that there is too much green also you can reduce it accordingly okay you can select and reduce the green color so you can pop out a little the image can pop out a little bit so it's just up to your discretion to just play around with it but right now i think i'm okay with what i have and you can see the preview over here regardless of what clips you are on whichever clips you are on you can see the preview also over here and from the canvas as well so at any given point try to look at the before and the after the before and the after so you can appreciate what you have done so this is basically how to do anything within and at this point if you want to undo any of the changes at this point you can just come over here and click on the undo button over here uh, and reset button over here and to have them reset okay so you can reset any portion of the clip okay so the next section that i would like to touch on this davinci resolve is how to use the shortcut keys okay or keyboard shortcuts to fasten your editing process so for example at what i usually use uh, frequently is at this point i can create ripple delete i have shown through the video how i create my ripple delete at different points uh, for example i want to cut from this point to where the playhead is i can just use the command shift and the open bracket and it's close uh, and it close it and it delete it and close the gap just like so and if you want to delete at this point from this point to the end of it i do the same command shift but this time around close bracket to do the, the the deleting this is the ripple delete that i use but then you can customize ripple deleting and any other function key function if you want by just coming to the davinci resolve over here and you can see keyboard customization you can see keyboard customization you have the option to kind of select and this is the you will have the option to view the entire keyboard and what the very basic functions are with the keyboard shortcuts so you can see the shift the control and the optional okay option uh, button over here the command bo button over here just to showcase what different kind of key shortcuts can depict in your editing process so you can check around the different commands as well as the keystrokes over here so for example you may have you can have change clip duration by just do, hitting on the command d to change clip duration and you can change clip speed as well to, by hitting on r and you can change enable clip enable clip by hitting on d uh, this one i have overrided because i have used another keyboard another shortcut for example i i can change ripple delete to and you can search the basic part is you can search for any control over here so for example i want to search for this is the control for ripple delete and if you want to customize anything you want to change it to another keyboard shortcut you all you need to do is to click on the plus sign over here you just click on plus sign and then you can add the shortcut key on your own so for example at this point i want to make it for example at this point i want to make it the letter d you can see it pops up that the letter d is already assigned to clip edit okay enable clip so to this one has been assigned but i still want to do you want to assign this keystroke yeah i still want to assign it to this one even though it's going to show this but then once you click on save it's going to pop up that it has saved it for you uh, on your keyboard so this is how to uh, kind of customize it so once you are editing so let's go back to the editing process let's say we'll close this and maybe i want to do a ripple delete at this point let's say i create another cut here and i needed to do a ripple delete from this point and i could just select the clip and press on letter d and you can see it does a ripple delete delete and close the gap for me so basically this is how to play around with the keyboard shortcut you are free to customize it to any form the ones that you use most often you can easily customize them to have it very clearly so you can use your hands to move around within the keyboard and have the best editing procedure so you can edit faster much faster with keyboard shortcuts and you can and do that with little efforts as well. 
Alright, so the last section of the video is the rendering process, okay, how to render and and export your video into MP4 or any format of your choice. So to do that, all you need to do is to move away from the edit uh, edit page and come to deliver page over here, which is the last page. So once you're here, you can see a preview and you have previewed everything about your video and you're certain you, you're satisfied with what you have, you liked what you've seen and you want to export it from the uh, DaVinci Resolve software, you will like what you have edited and you are so comfortable with the graphics, with the different kind of text and animations that you've put in, you can come all the way to export, which is you can come to the custom export and the basic things you will need over here are the name of the file. So you can just give it a name, my intro, and you can specify the location over here, you specify which location and you can just go ahead directly and specify where do you want to save it specifically? So assuming I want to save it here and I give it the name this you can tag put in some tags for ease of remembrance Once you say okay, it's going to be saved in this location. You have the option to select the other features These are the video features the format is quick time You can change it to mp4 if you want but right now you can hit I usually go to the H.264 and keep everything on. And this is the H.264, which is usually the MP4 format. You can see everything over here. Uh, everything, I keep it at default. The frame rate, I keep it at default. And the resolution, I also keep it at 1920 by 1080 HD. And every other thing I keep at, at default. You can come to the audio properties also and play around with some of the key properties, but I usually leave everything at default. So you can see, just have a preview of what you are exporting you can check the advanced in cases when you want to play with uh, play with the pixels and the data labels and the color spacing and all that i don't usually touch any of this and once you finish selecting all this and the basic features you assign the name you assign the location you can just come down here and say add to render queue by just clicking on add to render queue and you will see it over here being added to the render queue. So once you are starting and you can just come down here and say render all if you want to render the video to just start rendering. So just hit on render all and you can see it starts rendering the video. You can have you have the option to stop it or you can pause it if you so wish. But then this is the rendering and it just takes a little bit of a time and then it finished rendering and you can preview the video and have a look at it. So this is it. It has just finished the rendering and you can just go, go ahead and have a look at your video that you've created. Mm -hmm.